wait, what? Oh yeah, this video. It's one of the most popular TV series in our generation, and it helped increase the popularity of streaming. As a fan, I already knew that Atlanta is where the show is pretty much filmed at, but what I didn't know is that most of the exteriors and interiors are actually real places that you can visit, which makes that awesome because that's what made the show feel down to earth. So I decided to spend a few days to visit those film locations that are still here today. I recorded this in May, so the locations are pretty up to date on what they currently look like. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to visit everything available, but I did get to see most of them. So let's go ahead and start. Our first stop is Douglasville, Georgia, a small town that feels similar to Hawkins. This right here would be Hawkins Police Station, used in seasons 1 and 2. As you can see, it looks nothing like it was in the show. I think that's either because they had bricks on it, they took it off for some reason, or something else. Whatever it is, the internet is sure that this is the place, and it sort of does look like it, just not totally. Besides the bricks, the sidewalk is different, the sign is taken off of course, there's no roof or cover that was covering up the doorway, there isn't any bushes, and even the parking lot is different. The only thing left is a flagpole, but not even a flag is on it. It's a real building that's being used, so maybe it's just being redesigned or something. But who knows. It's barely noticeable, but hey, this is the police station. You can even match it up with scenes from the show. Here we have Palace Arcade and Family Video from Seasons 2 and 3. In real life, it's unfortunately a dumping ground of trash. That's why there is a truck blocking the shot because there are people dumping garbage in there. I wish I got to see up close, but I don't think they filmed in the inside. And even if I did, all you'll see is trash. I do like, however, that they left the paint on from the show, and they also left the brick support for the sign. Yeah, this is where the sign would have been. After all this time, I thought that sign wasn't real, but I guess I was wrong. Oh yeah, here's family video from season 3. This is Bradley's Big Buy, the grocery store from seasons 1 and 3. It's the same store Eleven went into in season 1. That's why the outside looks pretty familiar. The section where the Egos are in real life are in the same section Eleven got them in the first season. However, I didn't check that side because I was on the opposite, but people say it is in the same spot, so that's on me for not checking, sorry. It's pretty obvious that they filmed inside the store. You can tell if the same design and structure they have, and also you can see the ice cream lettering in the background. The automatic doors and even the checkout looks the same too, so there's no doubt that this is the same store. Everything is exact. Coincidentally, this is also the same store the kids had to hide in in Season 3. The nice people who worked there told me Aisle 6 is the same place Eleven had to get bandages. You can tell if the words fresh meats in the background, and you can also tell if the bandages that Mike sat in front of. Bitchin'. Yeah, bitchin'. The people who work here are actually pretty self-aware. 
They have autographs, memorabilia, some props I think, and they even have a book for us to sign to show how many people around the world came here. It's a great store. I recommend checking it out sometime. Right here is the hospital from season one. In real life it's a First Baptist Church, but the show made it look like a hospital, and it does kind of look like one if you think about it. There's unfortunately not a lot of stuff to talk about about this building because it was just an exterior location, but it is the same hospital Will was in at the end of season one, and somewhere around here I think is where Hopper left out of the building. Right down this road is the same neighborhood Mike, Lucas, and Dustin live in. Yep, this is Mike's house from seasons 1, 2, and 3. Out of all the locations, I found Mike's house to be the most overwhelming. After all, it's pretty much one of the first scenes of the entire series, and it's where they hang out all the time. The interior, however, was shot in the studio, so it's not the same. You also can't step one foot close to the property, as you can tell with the signs. I just wish I could visit the back because that has a few key scenes from the first season. Near Mike's house would also be Lucas's house from seasons 1, 2, and 3. And just a little further away would be Dustin's house from seasons 2 and 3. Just like Mike's, you can't see Dustin's house good enough because of the private property. All I want to do is just see his garage because that's where he found Dart in Season 2. But overall, Mike's house is definitely one of the best film locations we've visited so far, and hopefully they don't tear it down in the future and they just leave it as it is. This building here in Lithonia, Georgia would be Hawkins Post from Season 3. The same post office where Nancy and Jonathan worked at. The building in real life is abandoned and it's on a street with a bunch of other retail stores. You can recognize it when you match it up with scenes from the show. It just doesn't have the same paint job and it doesn't have the sign. I tried to get a look inside with the camera but there's really nothing. In fact I feel like the interior was shot in the studio as well. Wow, Hawkins Laboratory. You know, if you actually visit this building in real life, you'll be surprised how huge it is because that's what I felt like when I first saw it. I have to be honest, the area I was in when visiting this place was very shady. I understand that the building was a mental health institution, but there is a lot of creepy stuff in this part of Atlanta. It's also a lot easier to understand how the Duffer Brothers were able to film in these types of areas because of how cheap it probably was and the environment it's in. The building itself, however, is still the same building we all know from the show. It's got the same doors that they entered. It's got the same satellites, the same parking lot. Everything here is just like it was in the show, so they didn't really change up anything. There's a lot of stuff you could visit around this area, so I definitely recommend visiting the laboratory sometime. Why would you not anyway? It's even on the frickin' poster. Right here is Hawkins Community Pool from Season 3. And yes, it is a community pool in real life. Unfortunately, I was only able to get the shot outside of the fence, so this is all we're gonna get. Nah, I'm just kidding. A very nice guy who was working at the pool actually worked with the crew for Stranger Things 3, and he let us in and gave us a tour. 
However, just to keep his word, I'm only able to show a few things we got to see. Right here, of course, is the pool and the same structure used in Season 3. This is the same bathroom where Billy was in. I also got to see the same shack where Eleven and Mike were in. And right here are the concessions where Eleven and Max were at. Oh yeah, those are one of the same chairs Billy would have sat on. That was a very lucky day, wasn't it? Of course this would be Hawkins Middle and High School from seasons 1 and 2. Most fans visit this film location because it's an easy indication. In real life, it is a real school, and they're pretty happy to keep the Hawkins Middle School artwork up still. Of course, that's probably because they're about to start filming season 4. There's a lot of places around this area where you can find key scenes from the show. Also, if you stand on the blue bar next to the doors, you can see through the window the same tiger Nancy and Jonathan sat in front of in Season 1, and on the left of that is the entrance to the gymnasium. We then drove down to Jackson, Georgia to see downtown Hawkins, and oh my god. Well, where should we start? In the middle of the whole town is the library from seasons 1 and 2. In real life, it was just the exterior that was used. The interior was filmed in a different building. Near that would be Melville's General Store, aka the store Joyce works at. Next to it would also be the Radio Shack where Bob worked at in Season 2. Melvold's in real life is actually a Papa John's. Yeah, I said that. And at the end of that street would be the Royal Furniture Store. 
There's also a shot where we see Jonathan argue with Joyce. The building behind them in real life is a company called Butts County Water and Sewage Authority. I have no comment. On one corner of the street is the theater Steve spray painted in season one. In real life, I think it's like a restaurant or something, because it's obvious that it doesn't look like it was in the show. If you walk down the street on your right, however, you'll see the same alley where Jonathan and Steve had their fight in Season 1, so you can definitely tell that this was the theater. Well anyway, that's downtown Hawkins practically. It's a small town in Atlanta, but the people there are self-aware. There's even a store that sold Stranger Things shirts. And there's also an ice cream parlor that kept the Radio Shack sign. This small neighborhood in Atlanta is actually the neighborhood where one of the most iconic scenes of the show took place. Yep, this is the same street where Eleven flipped the van. When I was recording here, there was a lady with their daughter that told me that when they were filming this scene, they had to block off their street for three weeks just to film it. So you can only imagine how much stress the filmmakers had to go through by not only trying to get this scene right, but also not to disturb the residents living here. There's nothing much here, but it was nice seeing the same neighborhood. Our last stop, of course, is Starcourt Mall from Season 3. In real life, it is an actual mall called Quinnett Place, and it's shady as hell. And I'm not kidding, when we parked here there was broken glass and two random tires left in the parking lot. It's like that mostly because Gwen is left to rot. It's what you call a dying mall where most of the stores in there are closed and abandoned, while there's a few stores in there that are able to survive. There are some people shopping here, but not much. It makes a lot of sense how the Duffer Brothers were able to film here since the whole place is about to fall apart. This is the type of mall you hear creepy music in. When you walk around the mall, you can definitely tell you're in Starcourt when you can see the same patterns and structures from Season 3. The sign also looks similar and so does the window patterns. When trying to match up a scene from season 3, it was pretty tough. Even with the escalators, you can't tell which one is which. Also, there's a lot of places blocked off that you can't see. This black wall that was in front of me seems to be like they're working on something for the show or for the mall in general. Some people say it's where the movie theater is, but I don't know. The only place at the mall that I can recognize was one of the entrances. This is where Eleven and Max broke up with Mike and Lucas. You can tell of course with the structure, but also where the bike rack was. 
As our last film location, I didn't expect the mall to be so depressing, but at least we got to go see it. One of the main factors that made Stranger Things great is how down to earth it feels, and now that I got to visit a lot of the locations, it makes the show more likable. Yeah, season 3 was pretty unrealistic, but they did use real interiors next years like the mall and the community pool. And at the end of the day, I got to stay in the same place everyone in the show was at.